Windows 365 cloud PCs and Azure virtual machines may seem like different names for the same thing. A computer that resides in a Microsoft data center that you can control remotely. However, while they do share many aspects in common, there are some differences that might be important in deciding which one's right for you. And that's what this video is about. Now, if you don't want to use any cloud-based PC, you don't want to use the cloud at all, then neither of them is going to be a good choice for you. And it's a bit odd that you're watching the video, but welcome, I'm glad you're here. And if you're unsure of what a cloud PC is or what a virtual machine is, then check out some of the other videos on the channel where I cover a number of topics related to learning and technology and how we can use technology to teach and learn better, including virtual machines and cloud PCs. So assuming that you're here and assuming that you want to see the difference between Windows 365 and Azure, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The ways in which they're the same and how they differ. Specifically in this video, I'll look at some of the following aspects to compare the two. First, the manageability and how easy they are to acquire. Uh, the cost and the cost management of Azure versus Windows 365. How do we access them? The different ways that we access the platforms. And then finally, some functionality and some common scenarios of where I may wish to use one or the other. Now, to be clear, I won't be covering all of the benefits of a cloud system in general versus an on-premise situation. That's, a, that's an entirely different topic. So if you're a video editor or a video game player, or you use resources that require extensive graphic support, then this is not where we're going to cover that. Um, a lot of times that will require an on-premise solution. Now, the first step in using a cloud virtual machine is to create that machine. In Azure, this process involves logging into Azure, then selecting to create a virtual machine, then configuring the options for that virtual machines, such as the data center location, the processor allocation, the memory allocation, and the type of storage that you'd like to use, and then allowing that system to be created. Finally, with Azure, you need to ensure that the system is configured for remote access. And we'll look at that, how that happens in a moment. In Windows 365, it's considerably easier to acquire and procure that system. It's much easier than Azure in this regard. You can either have your IT department allocate the system for you, or you can log into your Microsoft 365 account and select from a range of systems that meet your needs. And the rest just happens automatically. A new cloud PC is there for you to access. Windows 365 makes the allocation and access to cloud PCs much easier on individuals as well as IT departments. And this is a strength of the service. It's probably intended to be easier. It's more of a click and buy solution that handles a lot of the back end work for you. Even IT departments will find it easier to work with as they can manage and allocate the cloud PCs through the Microsoft 365 administration portal. Purchasing, assigning, and managing licenses to cloud PCs for their users is much easier. Cost is an interesting area where you need to really consider your own use case scenario. For simplicity, Windows 365 is the easiest to understand. You select the size of the cloud PC you want, and then you're charged a month monthly fee for that system. If you leave the system on all day, every day, you pay that price. If you don't use the system for an entire month, you still pay that price. It's a monthly charge. This is where the comparison between Azure and Windows 365 gets a bit trickier in my opinion. If the Windows 365 system is assigned to you by your company, then this might just be fine. The company can allocate this as an operational expense and it might prove to be more economical to the organization than purchasing new hardware for each employee especially if you account for the total cost of ownership for the hardware, the maintenance, the IT support. Those are all things that need to be taken into consideration. With so many people having their own hardware at home, this allows for a bring your own device environment where the organization provides a company cloud PC, which is configured with the business applications, but they don't provide the hardware. What about Azure though? When you create an Azure virtual machine, you're given an estimated monthly cost, but this is based on the assumption of having that machine always on 24 seven. If you only use it half the time, 
you pay far less. I actually have a video on the channel where I demonstrate the cost of running an Azure virtual machine for only 10 to 12 hours a day, and it's not that much. This means that if I only use my Azure VM for a few hours a day, or even a few hours a week, as long as I shut it down, I stop paying as much for it. I can even configure it to automatically shut down at a certain time to save me money. This can mean a huge cost savings for workloads that aren't always running. So I can either have a far more powerful system that I run for less hours, or pay less money for the equivalent system that Windows 365 would give me because I'm not charged as much when it's off. So we need to access these cloud systems. And once again, this is very similar, but also slightly different between the two services. In Azure, we access the cloud virtual machine using Microsoft Remote Desktop Connection, which is an RDP client that we can download for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android. This gives us a remote control session to our Azure machine so we can take control of it. In Windows 365, we're given more options. We can connect to our cloud PC using a browser and run the system within the browser, or we can use the remote desktop application, which is not the same as the Microsoft Remote Desktop Connection. They're separate programs. And that last point can be a bit confusing, but it's important because it really does affect the functionality of the connection. So what about the functionality? If you're taking control of a remote system, you would think that this means the functionality resides on the remote system and you're simply controlling and looking at it through your connection. Well, that isn't incorrect. It also doesn't tell the full story. Specifically with Windows 365, you can allow access to some local resources from the remote system. Critically, you can allow access to the clipboard, microphone, printer, and files on the system that you're using to access the cloud PC on Windows 365. Although it doesn't say so with Microsoft when you first log in, you actually can also access the webcam on the local system with the Windows 365 cloud PC. And that's a big, big game changer, especially if you want to use things like Microsoft Teams. And if you saw my other videos on accessing Windows 365, you'll know that I wasn't too impressed with the quality of the video passed through, but it was possible and they might improve it as they have more powerful Windows 365 PCs. I actually allocated a much more powerful system and it worked really well. I have another video coming up on that as well. So this resource pass through can be allowed with both the browser as well as the remote desktop software. This isn't the case with Azure. With the Azure Remote Desktop Connection, it isn't the same seamless experience that we get with Windows 365. Furthermore, the Remote Desktop Connection in Windows 365 supports using multiple monitors. So in my case, I have three monitors in my office and the cloud PC was shown across all three monitors in Windows 365. I could drag an application between the different monitors and place them where I wanted them. So where does this leave us comparing the two? In Windows 365, it's easier to set up and manage. It has more access options and they have more functionality. So you get better display, better sharing, and generally a better user experience with Windows 365. However, the Azure Virtual Machine does require me to do more configuration, doesn't give me quite as much control in terms of displays, sharing webcams, sharing files and such, but it does give me the ability to really manage costs. So you might be left wondering, what should I choose? Azure, Windows 365? Well, in my case, I'm going to use Azure for those projects where I only need a system for a few hours, maybe to run a lab or an experiment or otherwise a temporary basis. I can live with those limitations and challenges because it's going to be very economical. I don't have to pay a monthly fee. I just use what I use. And I'm gonna use Windows 365 as well when I want a dedicated system that is configured for my work environment, for a client or for a school scenario where I'm teaching, for example, specific topics, mostly as a clean demonstration uh, machine that I'm gonna use when I do remote teaching. However, neither of the two is gonna replace my personal computer. I use that at home. It's not gonna replace it just yet. Specifically, I use Microsoft Teams for hours and hours a day 
through video meetings. And I need to make sure that that is a seamless experience before I'm going to switch to Microsoft Windows 365. Uh, it wasn't good enough on a low power three, Windows 365 cloud PC. It has been pretty good now that I've upgraded that machine to a little bit of a more powerful machine. And I'll do videos on that for sure on the channel but it needs to be a solution that works for me. That is an area that I'm gonna stay on top of. As the service evolves and matures, I suspect it'll be changed to accommodate many use cases such as the ones that I'm involved with. The teaching, the remote access, making sure I have that specific clean machine. And you can expect videos from me on that as well as other topics that we can use around technology for learning and teaching. Thanks so much for watching.